celebrate MLK Day, but it looks much different this year. From racial tension to ongoing violence and, of course, the coronavirus pandemic, this may not be what Dr. King dreamed of. Absolutely not. And joining us now to discuss this further is Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett, delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, good morning. Um, thank you for joining us, Congresswoman. Before we get started, you were inside the Capitol during that deadly attack. How are you doing now? It almost makes two weeks. Uh, I'm doing really well. Uh, you know, like so many people uh, in leadership here, our coping mechanism is to get on with the business of our democracy. So being named as an impeachment manager was in some ways kind of um, a salvation because it has allowed me to really drive myself and to use this crisis as a means and the activities of preparing the impeachment trial um, a way to cope. And Congresswoman, in your statement celebrating MLK Day, you said our duty to, it's our duty to bend it towards justice. That uh, actually stood out to me. I wanted to ask you, can you tell me what that, what you meant by that and why you felt you should touch on that in this moment of time? Oh, thank you so much for that. And happy Martin Luther King Day to you and to um, all of your viewers. Well, I, I, everyone knows the phrase that the arc of justice you know, that time it bends towards justice, the arc of time bends towards justice. And I've heard it used actually by individuals who are not engaged in justice. And that was absolutely so galling to me. I don't believe that that's a passive um, engagement, that we are not just supposed to watch and hope that it happens, but we actually have to do the bending ourselves. And in this time when we are dealing with an insurrection, an attempted coup of our government, uh, individuals who have tried to break the rule of law, it's even more important that those who, of us who are in leadership bend that arc, do our part to ensure that justice is done. Now, as someone, I want to piggyback off of what you said. And speaking of vindication, um, as someone who represents a U.S. territory, you were unable to cast a vote in the impeachment, but you were chosen as an impeachment manager by Nancy Pelosi herself. Tell us about how you built that case that led to the House not only impeaching Trump once, but twice. Sure. Uh, as you may be aware, um, there are several members of Congress who represent territories which are, in fact, colonies. Um, as well as the District of Columbia. And uh, collectively, we represent 4 million Americans who uh, are part of the draft, who engage in service to this country, who represent individuals and, and support our nation, uh, are proud to be Americans, and what the privileges along with the responsibilities of being American citizens. Uh, under the Democratic majority in the House, members of the territories uh, of course, have full voting in committees and also vote on issues of committee of the whole on the floor, but do not are not afforded the right uh, to vote in final passage. And so having Nancy Pelosi, who in her wisdom has put together what I believe is a really um, stellar team, all of us are attorneys having done litigation, prosecutors, defense attorneys, constitutional law professor, in our lead uh, manager, Jamie Raskin. But more importantly, we look like America. If you look at us, our experiences, our ethnicities, our ages really track the American experience. And I think that's what makes um, Leader Pelosi who, he, who she is. And of course, the irony, of course, is that so many Virgin Islanders, as well as people from the other territories, had tremendous angst about this election. While we participate in the primaries, we were not afforded the ability to vote in the general election. So we all volunteered, did what we could to support uh, the democracy. And uh, you know, the greatest uh, ability in a democracy is a vote. And um, you know, we've been happy to see that Americans came out in numbers greater than before. But so many Virgin Islanders and indeed people from Puerto Rico, Guam, are reaching out to me, leadership, saying uh, what great vindication it is that although we cannot vote for president in an election cycle, that our representative in Washington has been named as one of the individuals 
to have the sacred, I do believe it's a sacred uh, trust to be one of the prosecutors uh, trying this case against the president for the second time. Um, you know, our framers anticipated such an act as what Donald Trump has engaged in during their discussion of, of impeachment, uh, the House in um, the Parliament in, in, in England was impeaching an individual who had already left office but had engaged in heinous crimes. And not only did they anticipate um, a demagogue, an individual who would try to grab power for themselves and use the mob and use the people of uh, that democracy to try and wrest power and absorb it for themselves. But they anticipated that that person may leave office, may resign and try and um, flee from uh, the justice and have put in place um, the ability to impeach an individual after they left office. And indeed, uh, the Senate has engaged in trials against individuals after they have left office as well. So not only can um, a president be removed, but he can also be disqualified from running again, as well as stripped of many of the vestiges that we afford those individuals who are former presidents. So were you saying that's going to be Trump's fate? Well, you know, it is my job to prosecute him, to present the case that the article of impeachment that was passed in the House is correct. And so we are engaged in daily long conversations. Um, we have a tremendous staff of uh, attorneys, staff from the Judiciary Committee, our Oversight Committee, our own staffers. Congress, who are working I'm sorry, on Representative. I'm so sorry to interrupt. We have breaking news right now coming out of the U.S. Capitol where you are. Um, can you stick around with us uh, so we can pick this right back up? Breaking news right now, the U.S. Capitol participants in inauguration rehearsal on the west front of the Capitol are being evacuated by security officials. The Capitol Police released a statement saying there is, quote, an external security threat and staff are directed to avoid coming to the Capitol complex area. There are also reports of security checkpoints near the Capitol being locked down. All personnel are being advised to stay inside and away from doors and windows. We'll continue to follow those details as they come in, and we'll keep you updated right here on BNC. back with ER Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett. We had some breaking news. We had to finish our interview with her really quick, but we're back. So I did want to highlight and also mention you are also the first member from a territory to sit on the Ways and Means Committee and the fourth black woman. What does this mean to you? Well, uh, you know, being on the Ways and Means Committee is interesting because there was a point in time um, several, several decades ago, I understand in the late 60s, 70s, where it was understood in an agreement among leadership in the House that a member of a territory would not sit on the Ways and Means Committee. So having um, myself be on there when it is such an important uh, committee, uh, the most exclusive and the oldest committee in the House mentioned in the Constitution that deals with all revenue, all taxes. Uh, I'm deeply honored that the trust that the caucus has put in me to be a member of that committee. And being the fourth black woman following the steps of the first woman, Stephanie Tubbs Jones, um, who was the first individual to sit on there, I'm just happy to be part of the Trailblazers and sit with my two other sisters, um, Terry Sewell and Gwen Moore, who are members of that committee now. It's our job to ensure that there's equity in terms of tax laws, revenue, um, opportunities in terms of SSI, Medicare, all of the social um, impact and, and the things that we have fought for to make sure that we level the playing field and make sure that our communities are able to benefit uh, from the American dream. Representative Plaskett, uh, we heard about that. We just went into breaking news of a security threat outside of the Capitol. FBI already warned of possible attacks. Does this concern you? Um, you know, I'm always concerned, but 
uh, about security issues. Listen, I understand that being black in America is a security issue so often for many of us in our community. I have four black sons, a black husband. I'm, I'm worried for their safety all the time. Uh, but in terms of the Capitol and the inauguration, we are not going to let terrorists, we are not going to let insurgents stop the transfer of power. We recognize that this is not going to be a peaceful transfer, but we will let the world know that democracy will, at the end of the day, rule. And so I am um, grateful for the tremendous work that the everyday Capitol Police officers are doing here on the ground. But for them doing what they did, so many of my colleagues would be in grave danger and potentially be kidnapped, maimed, or dead now. And so I know that they have done their job. I have seen the troops that are here from so many states, and I want to thank those uh, Virgin Islands National Guardsmen that are here so far from home um, in America's paradise, being in this cold weather to protect us. And um, I will be out there on Inauguration Day. Um, many of my colleagues will as well, and we are not going to be scared. Um, this democracy was fought for not just by the founders, but our own families, our own parents, my father who fought in the Korean War and others, um, and it will go on. And Representative, uh, defense officials telling the Associated Press about a possible inside attack at the inauguration and what we're seeing today happening outside. Um, are you looking at your colleagues differently? Are your movements different um, when you um, go to work. Yes, you know, I am being very careful, particularly as an Im impeachment manager. Um, you know, we are trying to be as careful and have as much security as uh, they believe and our families and other outside experts believe is appropriate. Listen, um, you know, individuals who have been sent here by their constituents, that is their constituents' choice. Do I think that some of them um, need to be investigated? Um, that's potentially something that I believe that the House is looking at right now. I'm grateful for uh, the leadership, um, Speaker Pelosi, who has put uh, mechanisms in place to ensure that members have to follow rules um, related to uh, carrying arms here in the Capitol complex. But let's be clear. Um, there are many individuals uh, in, within the uh, House who do not believe in the truth. They don't believe in the truth when it comes to the election, one of the safest elections in our history. They don't believe in the truth even when it comes to the coronavirus, by putting other members in danger, by not wearing masks, by not engaging in social distancing. We saw that as well on January 6th. And so do I look at them um, and I stay clear of them as much as possible, but we'll confront them um, if necessary as well. Representative Plaskett, we will be praying for your safety um, and we thank you for joining us here on BNC Morning. Have a good day, ma'am, and be well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. And to stay